Hi, it's Dr. Saab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes-Benz GLC 300D AMG line 4MATIC Coupe Premium Plus. This video is perfect if you've just bought the new GLC or if you're thinking about buying one. If you wanted to watch a video on the GLC SUV, then please check out my GLC playlist to learn more. If you want a more in-depth video, then please check out my GLC part one video where I go in-depth on the technology and how to use the main features. Big thank you to Lucas Mercedes-Benz of Wolverhampton for making this video possible. They provided this fantastic car for me to do a video. Now to fuel the car, make sure you've unlocked the car and then all you need to do is push this and that opens the fuel flap and now all you need to do is put this here now you can fuel your car and then when you finish just put it back just like that and you've also got uh, your add blue filter here if you need to top that and then you've also got your tire pressures this is for the mercedes-benz breakdown so don't worry about that and a little reminder of what fuel the car takes once you're finished, just close that, get the key, press the lock button, and that's it, you're finished. Now to unlock the tailgate, just get the key, and you can hold this down, and it'll open the tailgate. And if I need to, I can close the tailgate by holding this button down, and you'll see it closes. Now another way to open the tailgate is by pushing the Mercedes-Benz badge, just like that. I'll open the tailgate and then you've got access to the rear. In the rear you've got you can fold the seats down by pulling this button and you've also got the carry hook. You've got a little bit of area to store stuff here. On the left hand side you've also got the carry hook and the option to fold that seat down and then you've also got the 12 volt socket. You've got storage nets, you've got anchor points on all the corners of the car and then you've also got the parcel shelf which does come off if you need it to and you can also store it just like that so you can hide your belongings if you need to and the parcel shelf comes off and you can stick it under this tray now you may get this reversible mat included so that's quite useful if you do get that and then to open the Underfloor storage, just pull that, and now you've got your storage here as well. And these little slots here is where you can store that parcel shelf. In here, you've got the basket, you've got a repair puncher kit, you've got the tire pressure machine, you've got a high vis, and a first aid box. And you've also got a warning triangle here in the red, and you've also got tow eye here as well. So if you were to break down, you've got these items here. Now, one thing I should have said is please don't use the repair puncher kit. And I'll explain why a bit later on in the video. Now I'm just gonna put this back. And then once I'm finished, I can close the boot by pressing this button. This button will close the boot. This button will close the boot and lock the car. Now let's say this height of the tailgate opening is too high for you there is a way of shortening that height now if i want to lower this all i do is press this stop it so let's say i want to save it to this position all i'll do is press and hold this button that beep is now telling you that that height for this tailgate will always be in this position so if I now close it and then open it, you'll see what I mean. So you can see that's open there. If I want to set it back to the normal height, just push it all the way up and then press and hold again. And now the tailgate will always open to the highest position. So if I show you again, there you go. Now, if I press this button, this will close the boot and also lock the car. 
very very useful next i'm going to show you how to access the car and you'll notice this car has chrome door handles now if you see chrome door handles on a mercedes that means this car has keyless entry so i can use the key to unlock the doors that'll unlock it when the mirrors open i know that that's unlocked and if i press the lock button you'll see the mirrors will close that means now the car's locked now as long as the key's with you because this car's keyless you can open the car by putting your hand into the slot just like that and then you'll see the mirrors have opened up and if i want to lock the car you'll notice little squares on the door handles now if i push that square you'll notice now that's actually locked the car so that's how you use the keyless entry so let's get into the car now to use the child locks up is to use the child locks down is to not have the child locks on moving inside i can also fold the seats from here by pulling this handle here and then you'll see the seats will fold which is very quick so you've got two ways to actually adjust the seat. Interior, you've got your isofix points. Inside the door, you've got the electric windows. Got a bit of storage here. If I move inside, you've got controls to use the rear temperature controls here. And you've also got USB-C connectivity which is quite a nice feature to have you've also got a hook here to store your jacket on both sides no grab handles that's okay you can use the grab handles on the doors they are nice and large and then center console the center seat you can fold you've got the armrest here as well and if i touch this just slightly you can store a pen here maybe or even a phone let me show you so if i want to i can store a phone here just like that or if i push this just a little bit like that i've got cup holders as well which is quite useful and i've also got some storage behind the seats I've also got my curtsy light for rear passengers. That lovely panoramic sunroof as well. You'll notice we have got grab handles for the front passengers and driver. And then you'll also see that I can adjust this headrest. Now, this is a quick way for me to show you from the rear. If I push this down, you can see I can adjust the headrest just like that. And if I push it you can adjust the headrest just like that really good adjustability there very nice now let's move to the front and I'll show you the main controls at the front now moving to the front I've got my lumbar controls here for the seat and let's move into the car now inside the car I'm going to show you how to start the car what you do is push the brake press the engine start switch here push that and that's it the car is on moving to the right towards the door i've got my seat controls and i can adjust the seat controls by touching this touch sensitive button and it will adjust different parts of the seat including my fire support and to raise the seat lower the seat I can even move the seat from here and you can even lower your headrest height increase your headrest by pulling there to adjust your steering if you don't like how the steering position saved you can adjust the steering electronically on this car and once you're happy you can save this as a seating position so if I press M and then the number one that beep is to say now this seating position is now 
set as number one. You can set up to three different driving positions, include your seats and your steering wheel. Next, moving to the right, I've got the option to lock or unlock the car. If the car goes above 10 miles per hour, it will lock itself, which is quite useful. You can set that if you want that to happen. Moving down, you've got your mirror controls and all you do to choose to adjust the mirror, just select which side you want to adjust and then press the buttons there. You can adjust the mirrors. Now this button will actually fold your mirror. So if I press that, it's folded the mirrors, press it again, that will unfold the mirrors. And then we've also got the electric windows for front and back. And this button will stop the rear passengers from opening the windows. So if you've got any kids in the back, you can press that button to stop them doing that. That will allow them to have control. That will allow them not to have control. Now moving down, we've also got a button to open the tailgate. And if I pull that, that will now open the tailgate. I'll get a little warning there. And at the rear, it's now opened. Now, if I push this button while the car's on, you'll see if I push that, the tailgate now closes. How useful is that? I've got some storage here as well. Now moving to, now moving here, I've got the light controls and I can adjust, I can put the lights on by moving it to there. I can put the side lights on, the parking lights. I just leave in auto. And then if you want to put your fog lights on, you can as well by pressing that button. You've also got your handbrake. Now to put the handbrake on, all you do is push the handbrake to put it on pull to release it. Make sure your foot's on the brake when you do do that and you'll notice when the handbrake's released you won't have a little warning but if I push it you'll see the handbrake light is right there now it's on. So pull to release it and push to put it on. And you can see whenever you leave the car just make sure that handbrake's on as a rule of thumb before you leave the car. Now you'll notice here is the gear selector and right now it's in park. Now if I want to put the car into drive, all I'll do is push this all the way down. You can see now we're in drive and the number's just telling you what gear the car's in. If I push it all the way up, it puts the car into reverse. If I touch it, touch it slightly, you'll notice it puts the car into neutral. But if you want to put the car into drive, just push all the way down. And if you push it all the way up, that puts the car into reverse. Now, when you put the car into reverse, you'll notice on the infotainment screen, your reverse camera. Now this car has got the bird's eye view. It's got the four 360 camera. So it's got four cameras on this car. So it's got a camera up front and the back and on the mirrors to give you this bird's eye view. Now you'll notice you've got the, the grid lines here. And as I rotate the steering, you'll notice now it shows you where the car is going to travel. And if I straighten it up, you may see some free little dots there. Some dots there. Now these dots next to this big line is giving you the recommended distance on how to park. So if I reverse it now, notice that dot which is going a bit past that wall it's okay because the other dot is just about there let me just show you what that looks like so you can see there's plenty of gap now for anyone with a push chair or a wheelchair to access that space there with the bird's eye view I've got the sensors here as well and this is just telling you how close you're getting to a wall or a car. So if I reverse a bit more now, you'll notice the sensor's going yellow as I'm getting closer and closer. And that basically red line is the back of the car. So if you got past that red line, you're actually going to hit the bumper of the car. So just be careful of this red line. 
you'll notice as I keep steering and turning, you can see that beep is to say that's as close as you should be. Let's see what that looks like. As you can see, that's quite close now. Now, because the car's got bird's eye view, if I move the car forward, if I put the car into drive, you'll see now I've got the front camera. And again, you've got the grid lines of where the car's going to travel to. You've also got a little line just there telling you how much gap to leave in front of cars, which is quite useful to have. I can see other camera angles as well. So if I click this one, it's for the front camera. This one's for the rear. This gives me a augmented reality of my car. And I can then see different sides of the car if I need to. If I want to see the right side. This is perfect if you are going close to a curb. And then uh, auto view. The car will figure out which camera to show you, which is quite useful. And then if you want to switch the parking sensors off, you can by pressing that button. Oh, a lovely fox has just gone past me. And then if you press this button, you can see the GPS is saved. Now, this is a really useful feature. Maybe you've got a driveway and it's a bit uh, difficult for you to uh, park or get onto the driveway. You can use this system where it'll automatically put the cameras on for you, which is very, very useful. And there's, there's the cheeky fox that was just in my video there. <laughs> where is it? There it is. Look at that. Wasn't expecting to see that. Yeah, the GPS saved. So that is a very useful feature. If you, you want the cameras to come on automatically when you get to your home address, so it makes it, your life a bit easier when parking your car maybe on your driveway or your carriage. Now, once you've parked, all you'll do is push this button and now you'll see the car is in park. When I switch the car off, you'll notice the handbrake comes on automatically for me. And before you leave your car, just make sure that handbrake light is on and then you can leave your car. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you is the hold feature. So when the car's in drive, and you get to a, a traffic lights and he's red, just gently stop and then push the brake and you'll notice the hold function light comes on. Now to use the hold function, watch this. The car needs to be in drive and let's pretend I am driving and then I stop. So I just gently stop and while I've stopped, I will then push the brake and you'll notice the hold function appear. This is really useful when you're at a traffic light situation. And then when you're ready to go, you just press the accelerator pedal and you're away. And again, if I want to stop again, gently stop, push the brake, and then the hold function appears again. And then you can keep pressing the brake, no problem. But as soon as you press the accelerator, it releases and then you can drive. Let me know in the comments if you find this hold feature a useful feature. I think it is really useful and I love using it. Next, I'm gonna show you what these buttons do on the steering wheel. But behind that, you'll notice you have got some galvanized buttons and these are your paddle shifts. So as you're driving, you can increase the gear by pulling here and you'll notice it's now gone to M1 which means it's now manual mode and the one is just telling you what gear you're in. And then you can also decrease the gears by pulling here. So decrease and increase the gears here. And then if you want to put it back into auto mode, just pull the stalk all the way down and you can see now it's in D1, which means it's in automatic driving mode. I'm just going to put the car back into park. Now you'll notice I have got some steering controls on the steering. The right side controls this screen and then the left side controls mainly the operations on this screen. So I'll show you this side first. If I press the home button, you'll notice I can now change different things here. Uh, you've also got the touchpad here and if I, I can set my destination from here if I need to 
uh, you'll notice I can use uh, destinations, previous destinations or favorites. I can zoom in and out if I need to, which is quite cool. And if I, I can change the map settings as well. So I can have a 2D setup or you could have even 3D, which I think is quite a nice feature to have. So as well as displaying the sign of here, you can display it here as well. And if I, I can then also change a radio station if I want to. And I've got other information if I want it. Now you'll notice this car's only done 190 miles, so it's brand new. Now if I want to reset this, all I'll do is press OK. And then I can then reset the trip meter. I'll select yes, click on yes, and there you go is now set to zero. So I like to do that whenever I top up my fuel, I like to reset it to zero to see how many miles I've done with a full tank of petrol or diesel. Now if I press the home button, I've also got the option of sport mode. And sport mode is a fixed design, so you can't really change anything here. But one, one thing you'll notice is that the speed and this information here is always fixed and at the bottom you'll always have your fuel uh, your time the temperature and also the p now the letter p is actually for the self parking system so if you see p that means the car can search for a parking space now if you want to watch a video on how to do that please check out the link in the description uh, below or check out the link at the top of there if you want to see how to use the automatic self-parking it is a really good feature i do love using that now if i press the home button you'll now notice if i go to sport mode you can see the fuels there and uh because this car's got a separate battery uh it will self-charge so you can see that information there if you need to and you can also see if it's in comfort mode I'll show you what that does a bit later on. If you ever see a little triangle just there, that's telling you which side you can fuel your car. So that's a very useful feature. And you'll also notice the 313 is just telling you how much range you've got with this full tank. Now this range can change depending on how you drive the car. So if you only drive it uh, in short distances, then that range will decrease. But if you're driving the motorway, that range will increase. But sport mode allows you to see the G-force engine information, and then you've got your revs as well. So if I rev it, look at that. How cool does that look? I love that. Now, if I press the home button, I've also got understated mode, and this actually changes the theme of the car. And you'll notice the car will just be a bit more calmer in terms of the design. Now you've got like a light purple and blue effect. And this is perfect if you're driving on the motorway. If you don't want any distractions, this may be the best option. Now if I go back to sport mode, you'll notice the theme of the car changes as well. So the infotainment now has a red kind of design on the infotainment screen. If I put it back to classic, you'll notice it goes to blue the infotainment, which is quite nice. Now if I press the home icon, uh, we've also got the navigation. So navigation here, I can actually set previous destinations if I want to, or favorites. I'll show you how to do that a bit later on. You can zoom in and out if you want to. So you can see I can zoom in and out. And again, if I want to change uh, the layout, go to map settings and I can do a 2D head up or you can even have 3D mode. It all depends on how you prefer. So you can set it to auto zoom for you as well. Uh, I'm gonna go, oh, you can even see the entire route, which is quite useful. If you press the home icon, you've also got assistance. Now this shows you what the sensors are picking up. So that's quite cool. And then off-road mode. Because this is a off-road car, you've got this 
off-road information, which is really cool. Got coordinates, got how high your altitude. Very, very cool. See, so you even got degrees as you're turning the so That's quite cool. Changes just there. Now if we press the home icon, we've got service. And here you can see when the next service is due, uh, how much AdBlue range you've got. Uh, you've got the coolant and the engine oil. And the great thing with this car is the car will tell you when you need to top up any fluids. So you don't need to worry about opening the bonnet and doing that. Uh, the car will tell you if you need washer fluid. Uh, you'll also have the temperatures of the tires and the pressures as well on the tires as well. And if you do reset the tire pressure, just select uh, that, click on yes, and that will then adjust the tire pressures. Message memory. So there's no messages currently for this car, which is lovely. If I press the home icon, let's put it back to classic mode. That's the one I prefer. And then what I like to do is display the sat nav. But you'll notice I can change radio here as well so whatever you're listening to you can change uh, the the track or the station now moving down so you have got the back button as well that takes you back to the last thing and then you have got some more controls here now if I press this button this is for the active distance assist now I can, I can actually purchase this through the Mercedes me account now I'll explain how to do that a bit later on, but that is a very cool feature. So you can buy the uh, automatic active distance assist. Now if you do want to set your speed limiter, you can press this button. And you'll notice you can have your speed limiter or your cruise control. So that's the symbol for the cruise control. Now these buttons actually control all that system. So uh, check out the video on the top right corner on how to use the cruise control and speed limiter if you want to learn and in the video you'll see as you're driving you'll have the speed there and you'll know what this symbol and this symbol does as you're driving so you can see that all in that video let me know in the comments if you find that useful now if i push this in the center that's got the horn and then moving to the left i have got controls for that side of the screen. Now I can control the screen by using the buttons here, or I can touch the screen if I want to, or I can use the Hey Mercedes function. I can just say Hey Mercedes, and then the car will do certain things. If I wanted to, I can use the heated seat switch here to put the heated seats on. But if I say, Hey Mercedes, how can I help? Heated seats on. Heat heating is turned on. You can see the heated seats are on. And then if I want to switch it off, I can press this button to switch it off. Or I can say, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Heated seats off. I'm switching off the seat heating. So you have got three different ways to control the functions in the car. Now if I press the home button, that'll always take me to the home screen which is quite useful. If I hold that down, I can then adjust the zero layer, or I can have it classic mode. I prefer zero layer. And then I can press the back button to go back to whatever I wanted to. If I want to, I can use these functions to select certain things. So if I want to go down to radio, I can adjust the radio here, or it might be just quicker just to say hey Mercedes change the radio station to certain channel something like that so I always recommend using the hey Mercedes function now if I need to I can answer phone calls here I can decline phone calls I can adjust the volume here and I can mute here as well if I want to use the hey Mercedes function without saying it I can press this button and then if I press this button so I can set a favorite function here as well. So if I press that, you can see I've got my favorites pop up here and you can customize this as well to different things if you want to, which is quite useful. 
you'll notice I've got the back button here. I've also got the home button here as well. And then I can adjust the radio here as well if I need to. You'll notice with zero layer, you will get prompts here as you're driving. Now, depending on the day and time, uh, you'll get different prompts as the car's got AI. So it'll learn what you like to listen to in the morning and what you like to listen to in the afternoon. Now, because this car, I haven't connected my phone to this car, it's prompting me to do that. So that's quite useful. Now, I have done a video on how to connect your phone to this car. And it also shows you how to use Apple CarPlay. If you want to watch that, just check out the link in the top corner there or in the description below. Now, this is just giving me some information here. So you do get an acoustic warning if you want to use that. And to switch it off, just hold down the mute button on the steering wheel until you get something on the driver display saying that that's switched off. That's quite good to know. So on the top right corner, I can change that if I need to. Very nice. You can see I can mute that there. And you'll notice now I've got off on the infotainment screen as well. Can tell the MBUX voice assistant to switch it on or off as well, which might be a quick way to do it. And if I want to, I can set it. I can press this button so I can quickly uh, switch it on and off if I need to as well. So there are different ways to use this infotainment screen. Now, to use a sat nav, the quickest way to enter a sat nav destination is to select where to. And just put in the postcode, that's what I would recommend. So I'm just going to put in the dealership postcode. Oh, so WV2 Full HD. And you can see it's coming up with the different uh, sat nav destinations with that postcode. And if I select this one, I've got the option of choosing different routes, uh, what's in the vicinity, such as parking. I can share this location if I need to, this destination or I can set it as a favorite. But if I click on let's go, you'll see now that it's set my route. And you can see the different other route I can take if I need to. Right now it's Please muted. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Now the sat nav's talking, so you can see that there. If I wanna see exactly the route with the text information, I've got that there. Now, what you'll notice is when the sat nav is talking, that's when you can adjust the volume. You'll notice now if I press this. Please proceed to the highlighted route. When the sat nav's talking, I can adjust the sat nav volume. And now I can adjust the volume for the radio. Please proceed to the highlighted route. So that's how you adjust the volume of a sat nav. Now, once you're finished, you can say to Mercedes to end destination or just press this button on the corner here and I'll end the destination. Now, if I select where to again, I can now use my previous destination if I need to. And if I click on the three dots here, I can now save it as a favorite, save as a home address, save as a work address. My top tip is to leave, if you, it's a place that you constantly go to, save as a favorite. Never save it as a home address, only because chances are your key, your car key will have your home keys. And if your car is stolen, they've got the keys to your home. So if they click select your home address as a destination, they could also steal your belongings from home. So I would only save it as a favorite once you've got a couple of uh, favorites saved here. Save that as a favorite now. And you can see that's saved as a favorite. If I pop into my favorites, you can see it's dropped into my favorites there. And I can add more favorites here if I want to. But uh, I can also do receive destinations. And I've also got points of interest. Now, this is really useful if you're in an unfamiliar area. Uh, you can see where your local parking is, any restaurants, stuff like that. Really, really useful to have that built into the car. Now, if you're going to go to a previous destination, the quickest way I find to go to a previous destination is to say, Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Previous destination. Please say the destination. One. I will show you the way. Please proceed to the highlighted route. That's a quick way of using your sat nav. If I want to end the sat nav, I can just click on the corner there. I'll end the sat nav as well. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to change the radio. Now to change the radio, you can 
click on these arrows here or if I select this I can now see the radio station and then I click on this I can see a list of all different uh, radio stations and you'll notice on the right hand side there are stars so you can set certain ones as a favorite you can set the favorite here as well if I press this button that just gives me information so as you're driving if you want uh, traffic information you press that button I'm just gonna have that switched off I don't want it to interrupt us while we're doing this video and if I want to search for a destination for a radio station I can type it in if I want to and if I press the back button I've also got the option to connect a USB device and you can actually watch videos on this as well on this car I'll show you how to do that a bit later on I'll show you where the USB is on, on the car so I got FM if I click on sources that allows me to see my favorites uh, if I want to have AM radio my Bluetooth or a USB device and then if I press the home button I can access the radio here as well so if I want to select radio I've got the option of radio controls here and you'll notice to just move the radio stations just like that with your finger you can choose from AM I can see my favorites here as well if I want to I can have that as a favorite by clicking the plus button and I can search for a radio station I can get a full list of the radio stations here again your traffic information as you for the radio traffic announcements by pressing that button and then I can change the sound settings as well and I'll show you how to do that a bit later on and the three dots here that allows me to customize stuff on the radio as well so if I want the radio announcements on I can switch it on and off here if I click the three dots I can choose what I want the announcements to be and then frequency fix is really useful I would actually have this on because if you're driving from north to south uh, the car will figure out the best radio station for that particular channel and then DAB slideshow I think it's just a nice touch just gives you a bit of graphics uh, for that radio station if you want to see a full list again you can see the full list here so that's how you use the radio and if I press the home button again, the off-road mode is really, really useful. If I give that a click, you can see now I've got loads and loads of information on the screen, such as where the car's traveling. I've got loads of off-road information, you get altitude. If I press this button, now I can see what's underneath me. If I select drive and move, you'll notice now I can see what's underneath me. How cool is that? If you want to switch off your parking sensors, select that. If you press this button, that just switches off your traction control. And then M will just put the car into manual mode as you're driving. So if you want to change the gears using the paddle shifters, you can if you want to. This button is your hill descent control. As you're going down a hill, uh, it may be worth using this button. Only when you're off-roading. You'll use that. Let me know in the comments if you use this car for off-roading. We've also got the settings app. Please check out the GLC playlist to learn more about what these functions do. I think it's my part two video if you want to see more about this information. Now moving down, we have got some buttons down here. Now if I select the dynamic button, that changes the dynamic select. And if I want to change it to comf eco mode, uh, just go to eco and then it was on eco mode. And you'll notice it always changes on the instrument cluster. So right now I'm on eco mode. If I select comfort, sport, you can see a little S up here. I can customize it there. So I can always see what driving mode I am there. Now I would only use eco mode when you're in stop stop traffic what will happen is it'll reduce the how the AC works so it uses less fuel comfort mode is just a good general driving dynamic select option when you're driving locally comfort is the best option sport mode is really useful 
Now, when you're using sport mode, you may want to use the sport mode when you're on the motorway. Uh, because what will happen is it will hold the gear longer and that will mean it will probably use less fuel. Let me know in the comments how you find that. Now, if you want to as well, you have got the off-road and you'll notice the maximum speed is 68 miles per hour. If you do want to activate off-road mode, you just have to click on activate drive program. Now you can customize all of these settings to individual mode. And if I click the cog there, you can now see individual mode. I can change the driving mode. So the gearbox can be an eco setting, a comfort setting or sport. Now if you put it to sport, it'll just hold the gear longer. And the steering, you can set it to comfort or sport. Sport will just make you, the steering feel a bit more heavier. Comfort will be a bit more lighter. And you can set the ESP to act uh, less by sport mode. And then the sound, if you want a more sportier sound, you can select sport as well if you want to. This car is diesel, so you can change that, which is quite cool. Good. And let me know in the comments if you find which one you prefer. Very cool. Nice to see on a diesel. Now, next to the dynamic button, we have the camera option. Now, because this car has 360 camera, I can now see all the different camera angles here. So you've got an option there. So I can see the front camera, the back camera, the side cameras. Perfect for avoiding any curves. You can set it to auto mode, switch the parking sensors off. And that might be really useful if you're in a heavily traffic area. If people are walking around you, uh, these sensors will keep going off. So you can switch it off here if you want to, and keep it back on. And then this button will save the position so if you want the cameras to go on automatically, you can press that option. So that's how you use the camera. Press this button. This allows me certain functions of the car. So uh, the car has got head up display and I forgot to show you that. I'll show you how to use that in a sec. Uh, you can switch off the ESP here, car wash mode. You can switch the parking sensors off from here as well. And then interior protection is really, really useful. Now, when you lock the car, and you're walking away from the car and you lock it, you've left people in the car. Uh, if this is off, that means now, when I lock the car, the alarm won't go off. So that's really useful. Tow away protection, always keep that on, unless you're being towed away. Now head up display, I need to show you that. So, so to use head up display, you can see, I've got head up display on right now. Now to get the head-up display options, I can switch it off here or on, but on this screen, if I press the home button, press the up button, I can now adjust different things to appear on the screen and on the head-up display. How cool is that? And I can switch on it, I can change the height if I want to, I can change the brightness. Quite a lot of customizability here. You can switch it off here as well by pressing this. If I switch it on again, it comes up. And then I can have eco display on if I want to. I can have the off-road information. Standard is probably the best one. You can even have, when you have a sat-nav destination, that'll also appear on here as well, which is very, very useful. How cool is that? Next you have the hazard lights. And then this is your touch finger. So you do need to be connected to Mercedes Me. I'll explain how to do that a bit later on. But you can set up to about six different drivers. The Mercedes Me accounts. And they can have their own uh, settings saved. Which is very useful. Next to that we have the 
uh, button here to switch off the display or switch off the system if you want to. Pull that down. I can switch it off and that's basically a reset as well by holding that down. So if you do have any issues when using uh, your MBUX system, hold that down and that will reset the MBUX system. This button is your mute button and then to adjust the volume you can adjust just like so. Now moving down we have got some storage here so you can put cup holders here you can put your drinks in these cup holders and you'll notice if I push this down that's how you get cup holders to up here uh, you can charge your phone here as well and now my iPhone 13 Pro Max fits here so that's quite useful and then if you put your key here you may get a message on the instrument cluster to say please put the key in here and this is where you put it and it gives it a quick charge as well so that might be really useful to use an emergency I'll just close that in here we have some storage and this actually pops out so you got a nice amount of storage here you got USB-C connectivity here as well and you should be able to put the uh, USB devices here as well if you want to back you have got your temperature controls here as well now I can adjust the temperature from my side if I want to and the passenger can have a different side which is very useful you they can also have their own so you can see they can have a different fan speed to mine this one is to clean the windscreen to clear it on a cold day frosty day you can do that uh, this button is for the rear so if I want to switch that off you can see I can switch it off just like that auto mode is really really useful because what will happen is uh, it will automatically distribute the air so I find using auto mode I have a less uh, misty screen uh, because the car figures itself out on how to distribute the air so you could try and do it if you want to but let the car do it if I select that I can just adjust manually if I want to if I press the climate menu button I can adjust where the fans uh, are blowing the air at and I can set it on and off if I want to here I can set the AC on and off I always recommend having the AC on. If you don't want to use the AC, that's fine. If you want to save fuel, that's fine. Uh, but I would recommend just once a month using the AC just to keep that system working. And then if I press the sync button, you'll notice that the temperature has gone to the, the same uh, temperature. So whatever the driver set, uh, that will appear there. So if I press sync, you can see it's 24 degrees now. Now, if I press the climate menu button, you'll notice it's synced to 22 degrees for both sides. Now, 22 degrees is the recommended temperature that Mercedes say that you should have the car at. Let me know in the comments if you find 22 degrees the right temperature for you after watching this video. And you'll notice when I call the climate menu button, the sync, it's basically synced. So whatever I do now, that will adjust accordingly for the passenger but if they then change the temperature it's unsynced if I press if I hold down the climb any button it's back to 22 degrees how useful is that now when I switch off the car you'll notice residual heat all you do is press the button and whatever the temperature is of the car you'll keep it nice and warm so if you last set it to warm you'll just keep that warmth in the car so if you quickly pop into the shops, you can have residual heat on. And when you come back into the car, it should still be nice and warm. That lasts for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes, I think. Let me know in the comments if you find that useful. Now moving from the screen, we're going to move up here. I've got loads of buttons up here. And if I, you'll notice passenger airbag is off. Because no one sat in the passenger seat, that will always be off. But if someone sits on there, that will then appear as on. So don't worry about it that it's off. Now this button, if I press this, it tilts open the 
panoramic sunroof and if I press it the opposite that closes the sunroof as well and then if I swipe just like that that will now open the panoramic sunroof you notice the electric blind has appeared and if I want that to disappear just swipe again and that's gone so you get all the full light and then to close the panoramic sunroof swipe all the way the opposite way and you can see now it closes you can see that's closed if you want the electric blind to be closed just swipe just like that and you can see the electric blind comes on now I would recommend having the electric blind like this on when it's on a summer hot day before you leave the car put the put the electric blind uh, on and that will just prevent the heat car from getting too hot and when you're back in the car just swipe opposite way and the electric panoramic sunroof will open how cool is that up here we have also got the light controls for your reading lights if you want that and then you have got so if you press this button and the door opens the lights won't come on automatically uh, you've got the rear lights for rear passengers and then this light is just for your reading lights which is very useful now mercedes me is really really useful so you can press that button and that'll call mercedes breakdown service by pressing that switch you will be calling the mercedes-benz breakdown service now this is complimentary from new for up to three years and then after that the breakdown service covers it's 24 7 it's uk and european cover now depending on what country you're from that might be slightly different so just double check with your local dealer but you get that from complimentary from new for up to three years now after the three years as long as the car is serviced by mercedes-benz dealer that will renew automatically every year and then that's up to 30 years so that is a really good service to use if you do break down you press that button they'll know exactly where you are they can try and do some diagnostics over the phone if they can so basically the car does have its own sim card how cool is that if you run out of battery on your phone or something like that press that switch and you've got that service there if you want to call them directly if you don't want to use that switch for whatever reason you have got the number and i'll show you where that is just in the door sill so you can call them directly now under the mercedes me button you also have the sos function now if you press this button the car will now automatically give your location to someone from mercedes benz they'll ask if you're okay and if you're not they'll send out the ambulance the police or the fire brigade now this is really really useful if you were in a accident and the airbags ever went off the car will automatically use the sos function someone again through the speakers will speak to you because the car's got its own sim card they'll check if you're okay if they don't get a reply from you because you've been in that crash the airbags went off if they don't get a response they'll just send everyone out to you the police the fire brigade and the ambulance and i think that's a really really useful feature to have you might want to know how do you get connected to mercedes me now if you bought the car from your mercedes-benz dealer they would have automatically got you set up maybe you bought a used car from an independent dealer or something like that then what you'll need to do is go to your local mercedes-benz dealer take your registration documents such as your v5 for the uk and take your driving license or your passport and then that is proof that you own the car and someone from your local dealer can get you set up on mercedes me now if you've leased this car through a leasing company then you can ask them to get you set up on your mercedes me account but if they're not willing to do that ask them to send you an email confirmation that you're allowed to use mercedes me and you'll need to provide that to your local dealer as proof that you are allowed to be connected to mercedes me again take your driving license and your passport with you as well as proof that you are leasing that car top tip if you're ever going to do that if you need your mercedes me account setting up what i would do is maybe just phone them up just to arrange an appointment the next thing i'm going to do is show you how to open the bonnet if you need to top up any washer fluid and to do that just go underneath the foot pedals and then you should see a lever and if i pull that 
that will now release the bonnet. When you're on the front of the car, all you do is pull a little lever just around here, pull that, lift it up. You can see that's what I was pulling, that just releases it. And now you've got access to the engine bay. And here I can top up any engine oil, some fluids here. Uh, this is where you top up your washer fluid. And then if you need to charge your battery, you've got the option here, with the earth point here as well. So you can access that in here. Well, my top tip is with these cars, as long as you get it serviced, you don't really need to worry about wash top topping up the washer fluid. What I would recommend is if you're getting your car serviced in summer, then in winter do a winter health check. And vice versa, if your car is serviced in winter, get a summer health check done. And what they'll do is they'll check your water fluids and your engine oil, and they'll check your tires as well, just to make sure everything is in top, tip top condition, including your brakes as well. And they'll even check your wipers as well. Now, once you're finished, what you'll do is push this all the way down and do it you don't have to do it softly do it quite firmly and that will make sure that everything's lined up correctly with the bonnet now i have done a really in-depth video on this glc8 coupe it is in two parts so if you do want to watch that check it out in the glc playlist part one shows what the driver mainly needs to know part two shows you the infotainment screen and some other bits that's not covered in part one. I found that part one, part two videos, the video might be just too long to watch. So hopefully this video is not too long and you found it useful. There is a new thanks feature if you want to donate to the channel and any money raised from YouTube will be used to buy more equipment. Please subscribe as it helps me and the channel grow and create even more content. Please like this video. Also comment if you have any suggestions or questions. Check out the GLC playlist for more videos related to the GLC, including a full video on what specification the car has. And some of the videos in the GLC playlist will be of the C-Class, but the features will be the same. So hopefully it helps you out too. There are videos on how to connect your phone to the car, how to use the self-parking feature, and even videos on how to use the cruise control and speed limiter. Thanks for watching.